In this tutorial, we're going to cover something very important. We're going to go over the logic flow of how Giri works for calculations. And we're going to go over specifically using email objects and how it affects that logic flow. This will help you really understand how everything comes together. Now, Giri is set up from the ground up to work just like modern digital marketing does. You may not, or most people don't, really use no paths where if someone doesn't click a link or doesn't opt in for something, then you're not really doing anything with your automated marketing. But more and more smart marketers are using when people don't take a call to action, they then do something else with those people. Send them a different email sequence, try to get them to do something else. You know, if they send them to complete a survey and they don't do it, they tag those people in their system, those prospects or customers, and then they follow up later and try to send them back to, for example, that same survey to try to get them again to complete it. So Giro is set to help you use no pathways to build your marketing funnels and to simulate different outcomes. But you have to understand how those end paths actually affect the math. And if you want to get around things where you're trying to still, let's say, reach all the people on an email list or things like that, and to have all of those folks later on down a flow line reach an object, then you have to know how to do that. And that may sound confusing, but I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So we've got a simple model here, simple linear model. We've got traffic coming into an opt-in page. Then they see a thank you page. Then they're going to get an email, and then they're going to go to a sales page, so on and so forth. So we have an entry point here. If you haven't yet watched the tutorial on traffic, you want to watch that to know how you set this up. But we have the number one entry point box here. Inside it, we have a separate traffic source set up, which is a Facebook ads campaign. So to be simple, it's going to send 100 people to this first opt-in page that you see here. We have a 50% opt-in rate that you'll see set up here for this opt-in page. We're keeping the math simple. So that just means half of the traffic that goes to this page will opt in and move on down the yes path. This is like a true flow chart, you know, logic kind of diagram with any other flow chart maybe you've ever used in the past. There are yes paths and no paths and that's how the activity flows. And the way it flows here is just like it does with digital marketing based on these call to actions. So the call to action on opt-in page is to get people to subscribe. So 50% opt-in rate means of the 100 visitors, half of them, or 50%, will opt in and then move on our yes path. So we started with 100 visitors. We've already cut that down in half. Now 50 people reached the thank you page. Those same 50 people move on. The thank you page really doesn't have a no path because it's just a confirmation page that loads and there's nothing on it. If you did want to have a call to action on that page that loads, then you can use a content page object in Giru or even the custom object that we have. And you can set a call to action and that could be like a page that loaded maybe that had a link you wanted them to follow that then goes somewhere else, like a webinar registration or somewhere else. Or you could load and have one of those other pages connect directly off the opt-in. But let's keep this simple. Opt-in page, just a thank you page. And then everyone at one day wait will get this email. So all 50 people that opted in will get this email. And then what's going to happen here is they get an email that tries to send them to a sales page where a product is going to be sold. I just put in real simple math, the $100 product, 10% of people will buy it. Now what you have to understand about emails in Giru. So the call to action with an email object is a link click. There are basically two main metrics with email marketing today. That's open rates and link clicks. We don't use open rates because open rates are inaccurate and clicks are much stronger and more of an accurate behavioral trigger inside digital marketing and marketing funnels. So for Giru, emails are all based around clicks. So the yes path is all the people that clicked, in this case, to go over to the sales page because that's what was being mentioned in the email. But what you have to understand about using emails in Giru, and that's why I'm explaining this logic flow, if 50% of the people that got this email clicked, and we're just keeping the math simple, it may be lower, maybe you know much different percentage. So we know that 50% opted in, they 50% reached this step, they got the email, then 50% clicked, so we cut it in half again. So that means just 25 people would ever reach this sales page. 10% would buy, and if it's an off number, like 10% of 25 being 2.5, uh, then it's typically rounded up. But you get the idea. So the further down we go on these percentages, the numbers are getting cut down, cut down, cut down for this flow like any flow chart works. So 50, 50 people get the email 
half of them click, so 25 people come to the sales page, 10% buy and end up on the order form. So that would be 2.5 people. That's a weird number, yes. Let's just call it three. And then right now we have no card abandonment. So we just say all 100% of the people that reach the order form end up filling it out and submitting it. So three people would end up on this thank you page. And then ultimately we have another email going out. There could be a wait timer here. This could be a bunch of emails, whatever. But this email goes out to only the three people because that's who's left on this Y path. That's what I need to point out to you. This email here doesn't go out to the entire email list of all of those 50 opt-ins that joined the opt-in page. So if you wanted all of the people on the list to actually get that email, what we would need to do then, I'm gonna move it down here to make it easier. What we would need to do then is actually connect this endport to that email. Otherwise, the half of the people that did not click through to end up on the sales page, dead end here, they're not going anywhere. So we have to then connect this no path further down the line if we want those people to also get this email along with however many people ended up buying. So that's what you would do to continue the flow for everybody on that list that opted in. That's very, very important. Now, if you wanna set up a marketing funnel diagram in Giru, a model in Giru that has emails that go out that have no call to action, where you're not trying to send them a link to go somewhere, maybe it's just a content email. Maybe you're just gonna send them an email every other day that's just great content, and you're not actually gonna send them anywhere. So you just want everyone on the list to get each of those emails. Well, let me show you how you can do that. Let's start by deleting all these objects. And then what we're gonna do is if we go inside this email object here and look at the settings, you'll notice it says call to action. By default, it's on yes, and that relates to a link in that email. And we're able to set the click rate of that link. So that was how many people moved to the sales page. That was a, a link in this email that said, here, go here and check this out. So that link would go to the sales page. If we turn this to no and save, Look what happens. There's no more no path or yes path. It's just an email. Now, if we bring another email object onto our diagram here, we're gonna connect this. Now, what this represents is the entire list will get this second email. They get this one, which has no yes or no, so everyone moves on to the next one, and they get this email. Now. If we have a link representing this email where the yes path is going to go somewhere, meaning all the people that click the link, then we can't again forget about all the no's at this step because they'll dead end. They won't get another email or something else farther down our marketing funnel flow unless we bring them back and connect them like I just showed you how to do. If we wanted this just to be a content email, we turn that off. No call to action, those are gone. We could add, let's say another email. And now we could have a link in this email and then that would actually go to a page. So this is how you kind of represent an email that goes out that is not sending out a link, not trying to get people to go somewhere, maybe just a content email or a confirmation email to thank them or whatever the case may be. And this just means everybody on the list is going to move on or, or at least everyone that at this step got this email will move on. So that's how you set that up. Now, one of the things you have to understand though on any of these emails, where you turn the call to action off or you're just representing a content email with no link and call to action. If you're going to add like another email to the sequence, you could have a wait timer and you could, you know, let's do that. Let's say it's a one day wait. What you'll notice here is that, let me put this up here. What you'll notice here is that you can't draw, you can't click this email and then draw a line to the timer because to draw lines from an object and not have them auto connect, you have to click on the either the yes or no because that's the line that you're making. Well, when you turn call to action off, you're removing those yes and no pathways. And when you highlight an object, if you're gonna drag, it moves the object. So you have to understand if you ever do turn off the call to action in an email or in a chatbot message or in any of the other objects that have the ability to turn off the call to action, the only way to connect them to something else is to auto connect it. And that's to bring it close enough to the side. Whoops, we got an auto connect on this one. That's to bring it close enough to the side where, boom, now we have that connection. So you can't click the object and draw to it like you can from the other objects. 
you have to only use auto connect. And then we could connect that timer again to this email and then this could have represent a link and that yes could go somewhere. But that's it. So that's just what you have to keep in mind. If, if it's going to represent a content only email, then you want to turn the call to action off. It just means whoever got that email will then get the next one and move on in the flow. And if you want to actually have a call to action like a link that goes to a page or something, then you would use these yes no paths by leaving the call to action in default on. But don't forget about everybody that didn't click the link, otherwise they dead end there at that little no, no junction.